So for those of you who have not gotten the message, uh, I'm starting a new tutorial series. This is going to be the quote unquote advanced series. I made a uh, announcement video, you can check that out if you want. But the gist of it is that this first uh, arc of tutorials in the advanced series is going to be making an engine uh, that will help us practice skills to bridge the gap between 2D and 3D graphics. So this is going to be our gateway drug into the world of 3D. Oh, that sounds exciting. So without further ado, let's get this terrible party started, everybody. First, we're going to have to open up our, uh, our thingamajig, you know, this thing and if you haven't uh, jumped on the visual studio 2013 bandwagon yet you're gonna have to get on that because that's what we're gonna be using so <clears throat> damn phlegm how to download this bullshit uh, obviously Google duh Let's see if we can get some Google action here uh, what do you want so you want visual studio 2013 Express, but the desktop version for Windows Desktop, because there's a version, the original version that they put out, was only for uh, Metro style apps. I think it was like Windows presentation format. I don't know what the fuck that bullshit is. Anyways, people said that's fucking stupid. So then they made a one that you could actually write real programs for, and that's the Windows Desktop one. So you need to get this one. It's all good. I don't know. Visual Studio Express or just the... I think maybe you can download just the C++, but I'm not sure. Maybe you got to get it all. I don't care. Get C Sharp. It's good too. Get it all, man. Get it all. So you got to download it. And when you install it and everything is good, you'll have something like this. And then I take on my gum. No. Uh, what is next? <clears throat> Okay, I figured out what I'm doing now. I know what I'm about. So what you gotta do is you gotta download this from, you know, the forum. Go to the forum and the download place. Download this zip file. And this is a special zip file because this one is a template. A uh, Visual Studio template. So you gotta download this thing and you gotta put it in your template folder, which should be where your documents are, your My Documents thing or whatever and you go to Visual Studio 2013, you go to templates, you go to project templates, and you just stick it in here. So you drag it into here. <clears throat> then you go file, new project, and under Visual C++, just under the main uh, thing here, you should have the uh, Chili DirectX framework template with the fucked up icon here and a cooler icon here that was made by uh, Bobo or Bob Blah, so I don't know, whatever dude guy from the forums cool guy made this thing and I used it so yeah you wanna create a new project so what are we gonna call the the name of our project, we'll call it uh, what are we gonna call it engine and the solution will be uh, thrust that's a good name right <clears throat> get a little innuendo in there thrusting gyrating of the hips no that's not that's not what I meant at all so create a new project thing and here we go and we have the framework all set up in our new project. See, the, the the advantage of having the template is that you can create new projects with like different names and shit. Whereas if you just copy and paste the folder from the blank solution, then you're gonna every one of your projects is gonna have the same name and it's gonna fuck everything up. It causes problems sometimes. So this lets you clone the project, but give it a unique solution and uh, project names. It's all good. It's all good. So, let's explore 
the uh, the new framework because there's a few changes that have come across here. And so let's start with game. Only real change here is I added a new function update model, uh, which is called before begin frame and compose. So it just makes it more explicit that you should be uh, separating your drawing code from your simulation code but not a biggie should have been doing that already or something similar uh... windows nothing changed i added one thing here um, <clears throat> and that is uh, i i did this check here to make sure that you're not getting auto repeat so if you hold down the button it won't give like multiple key press uh... events it won't create them on the on the keyboard buffer thing whatever so Canceling auto repeat. Auto repeat still works for character presses, so just key down events. Will not be subject to auto repeat. Timer, that's unchanged. Sound, I don't think we've ever actually used this in the tutorials, but we'll use it sometime. It's a little, it's a little wonky, but it works sort of. Mouse, yeah, same stuff. Keyboard, graphics is mostly the same, except. I don't know if I had this in the earlier versions. I can't remember what I had, but I have uh, unsigned. I have constant static constant variables here for screen width and screen height built into the graphics object. I can't remember if I did that before. It doesn't matter. So that is all of the CPP files and a lot of the H files. Let's check. Let's take a look at what's new here. So going down, I create a new uh, header called Chili Math. It's just your own. It's a way to have your own math files. It includes the basic math, but then you can also add your own definitions. So I added two definitions here. Uh, one is a floating point pi, because math only defines the double one. <clears throat> so if you use it directly with floating points, you get, you know, warnings about converting. That's just that pisses me off. And the other thing I made was just a, a simple square function, the square value. It's a template function, so it uh, it works with anything that you got. Doubles, floats, ints, anything. <clears throat> so that's, but we'll be adding new math functions as we need them. Just a place to put your generic math definitions that aren't in the uh, the vanilla header files. Here's a colors one. It just defines a bunch of colors to use, so I can put colors by name instead of by number. Makes code, I don't know, a little easier to read, I guess. And I've got our graphics. That's all the same, really. Mostly the same. Frame timer, we used this a long time ago. We might use it again for performance timing. We might not. I, I just, I left it in. You never know. Keyboard, that's fine. Mouse is fine. Rect is what we had from <clears throat> making the platformer. This is our template class for rectangles. So nothing really new here, I don't think. No, everything's the same. Resources, of course, same. Sound, timer. And last, but definitely not least, we have a little class here called Vec2. Let me just uh, collapse all in. Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> so we got this big ass class here. And this is definitely new. It's not new for me because I made this a long time ago. Uh, for those of you who know, I made a, uh, a physics simulation that has uh, balls and rectangles bouncing around. It does collision and uh, convert conservation of angular momentum and stuff <clears throat> it's really cool and I made this class to do the math that was involved with all that physics and I've been using it ever since and we're gonna use it for the tutorials uh, it's a vector class so before I explain you know all this stuff in this class I thought it would be a pretty good idea to uh, give you guys a little a little crash course in the basics of vectors. 
the ideas behind vectors. Because we're going to be using them a lot. Vectors is the new hotness. So let's see if I can't... Uh, mm, find something that'll help me explain vectors to you guys. So vectors interactive. What do we got here? Vector addition angle. Hmm. What's this one? That's what's this? Same thing. Okay. Here we go. So what's a vector? Think of a vector, we generally uh, think of them or depict them as an arrow. Usually starting from the origin, although it doesn't really matter. What matters is, is that a vector has two things. It has a magnitude, which is the length of the vector, and it has a direction, which is obviously the, the direction or the angle in which the, the, uh, the vector is pointing. That's how we define a vector. It's a it's an entity with a magnitude and a direction. And we can do a lot of... Uh, we can use vectors to represent a lot of things. We can use them to represent a position, right? So if we wanted to represent uh, this point here, we just create a vector that points from the origin to that point. And there you go. You've got a vector that represents a point. Um, but vectors could also represent uh, velocity, right? So if you've got a vector velocity like this, it's saying that you're moving in this direction with this much speed. The length of the vector determines the speed. Longer vector, more speed. Uh, and same for acceleration and forces. You can represent lots of shit with vectors. Shit that has magnitude and direction. Um... So what to say about vectors? Well, let's see here. Let's get out my old trusty blackboard. We'll get rid of that. We'll add a new layer. I'm smart about my layers now. So vectors, what can we do with vectors? Well, let me show you how we write vectors. This is how I write vectors. I write the variable name of the vector, so in this case, V. That's my go-to name for vector, V. And you put a little uh, little arrow on top, and that tells you it's a vector, as opposed to just being a scalar. Scalar is just a number. Like, for example, x equals 5.3. That's a scalar. But a vector is, you can't represent it with just one number, really. Not really. You could argue that a one-dimensional vector could be represented by a single number, but that's just crazy talk. So yeah, V with a little arrow on top. That's how I that's how I represent a vector, or U, or P, whatever. As long as it's got that arrow. Arrows are important, people. Never forget. Never, never forgive. So V. Mm. So what kind of things can we do with vectors? Well, one thing we can do with a vector is we can multiply it uh, by a scalar. So let's say multiplying a vector by a scalar, we write it like this, the scalar times the vector. And what does that do graphically? Let's look at the fucking thing. Yeah! Uh, well... Let's say you've got a vector. This tells us the length of our vector here. The length is 6.4. Now, if I multiply this vector by... Let me get a nice... There we go, 5. That's a good one. Now, if I multiply this vector by the scalar 2, it's going to make the vector twice as long. So its length is going to be 10. If I can get 10. Well, close enough. But the direction stays the same. That's the key point. Multiplying a scalar by a vector will scale the, uh, the magnitude of the vector, the length, but the direction will stay the same. Likewise, if you multiply by something like 0.5, it 
you will make it half as long, right? Multiply by 0.5. If you multiply by a negative number, it will go in the opposite direction. So if you multiply this by negative 1, it will keep its magnitude, but it'll be in the opposite direction. So first thing you can do with vectors is multiply them by a scalar, and you get a new vector, which has the same direction, but different magnitude. Unless you multiply by a negative number, in which case the direction will be opposite. So the second thing we do with vectors isn't really a thing, but you can negate a vector, right? Which is the same as saying scale this vector by negative one, right? Multiply by negative one is the same as negating. And that just, again, flips the direction into the opposite direction. So multiply vector by scalar. And of course, you can also divide a vector by a scalar. And that's the same as multiplying a vector by 1 over the scalar. Divide a vector by 2, you make it half as long. Divide it by negative 1, you flip it, etc. Not complicated stuff. So here's the things we can do with vectors and scalars so far. Can you add a vector to a scalar? k plus vector v. No, you can't. That's dumb. Don't try it, kids. It's not a thing you can do. Likewise, for subtracting vectors and scalars, they just don't mix. That is not how they fly. So, vectors can be multiplied and divided by scalars. What can you do with a vector and another vector? Well, you can add vectors together. Let's see how that works. This, uh, this little demonstration is called Vector Edition 2.02, so I think we can get some vector addition going. Let me see my vector here. So you've got a vector here. Let's grab another one. You've got another vector here. <clears throat> Two vectors. How do you add this vector to this vector? And what would that look like? Well, it's very simple. Vector addition, tip to tail, tail to tip. You just go like this, and the resulting vector is going to be from the start point of the first one to the end point of the second one. This is the result of adding this vector to this vector. You get this one here. And if you don't believe me, show sum. Wait, oh, it's going to show the sum of this one and this one and this one. That's not good. That's not good. This is the sum, which is just like I said. So vector addition, tip to tail. Very simple, very uh, easy to grasp with your eye organs, your visual organs. All right, so <clears throat> vector subtraction, u minus v. Actually, this is unfortunate, because V's and U's can look very similar, but um, who am I to go against tradition? That's a traditional vector name right there. So let's see, vector subtraction, How? what does that look like? You go, you go away now. You got two vectors here, and let's say you want to uh, subtract this vector from this vector this one from this one. How does that look? Well, it looks like this, my friends. Just like that. Tip to tip. That's how you get the, uh, the resulting vector, which would be this vector here. Subtract this one from this one. Uh, subtract u from v, or v from u, yeah. Subtracting v from u, and you get this vector here, tip to tip. Now another way to think about subtracting vectors, let me just 
move my guys over here so that it makes it easier. Uh, is <laughs> let me show you on the thing. So u minus v, subtracting v from u, is the same as u plus negative v, which is just u plus uh, v flipped. So if you want to visualize vector subtraction that way, uh, you take the, uh, the, sub the subtractant, I don't know what you call them, the thing, and this one is what? Let me see here. 11.2 and 63.4. And then you go this way. Let me see if I can get 11.2. 11.4? Well, geez, that's close enough. And then, again, adding vectors is tip to tail. So you get something like this. Well, I was close. I wasn't perfect. Not perfect, but pretty close. It was like that, right? Moral of the story is subtracting vectors can be visualized as adding uh, a vector to the, the flip of another vector. All right, so you can add vectors, you can subtract vectors to and from each other. You cannot divide vectors. Vector division isn't a thing. It's not really a thing. Uh, vector multiplication is a thing, but there's actually more than one kind of multiplication with vectors. You get a whole, you get a smorgasbord of products that you can, that you can define and use. And, well, I at least three. Three or two, depending on your view. But I'm not going to talk about vector products uh, in this video. That'll be for later when we actually need them. So we're going to we're, um, we're stick with uh, vector addition and subtraction. Uh, the last operation on vectors that I'm going to discuss here is uh, the norm or the absolute value operation gives us the length of the vector. So it's normally written like this with double bars on both sides. And that gives us the length of a vector equals length magnitude of u. Uh, I usually just write it single bars, just like a normal absolute value, because I'm lazy and double bars take longer to write. So I just write it like this, and that gives us the length of the vector. And uh, where's my where's my window? So as you can see here, that's just yeah, they, they write it right here. Like, and they even use the single bars just like me. I feel vindicated. Uh, yeah, so you've got your uh, R, and that's the name of your vector, I guess. I don't know. And you put your single bars, that gives you the length. So as I make this thing longer, it gets bigger. Absolute value of our vector R, or our vector U, or whatever you want to call it. So those are the operations. I'm just going to get rid of this layer. Die! Ha! And, so our operations are k times v, v divided by k, negative v, uh, v plus u, v minus u and absolute value of v. These are the uh, operations that I have clear little outline for you and how they look. Now, the important question that I haven't uh, quite answered yet is how do you represent a vector? How do you write what does it mean? What are the numbers? 
And that's quite simple. There's two ways of representing a vector that we're going to use. So u, one way is the matrix form. So for a two-dimensional vector, and we're going to be using column vectors, so that's a vector that goes up and down. That's a column vector. And it's just written like this with the uh, the x component and the y component. So we write our we define our vectors with uh, their x and y components, just like this one, rx, ry, right? So here I'm changing the x, leaving the y the same. Here I'm changing the y, leaving the x the same, and so forth. The other ways to define a vector, it's not the only way. Vector is magnitude and direction, but there are many ways to define that. Another way is by directly defining the length of the vector and its angle. And that will also give you magnitude and direction. But for the purposes of calculating on a computer, it's way easier to do it with uh, the Cartesian coordinates of x and y. So that's how we do it. That is how we do. And when we, uh, when we want to re refer to the uh, x and y components of a vector, we would just use u sub x or u sub y without the arrow on top because components are scalars. Vectors are vectors. Yeah, vectors are vectors. There's a little uh, nugget of knowledge for you. <clears throat> now the other way that I'm going to uh, be using sometimes, occasionally, to represent vectors is like this. As a sum of vectors u y times y hat. So u x times x hat plus u y times y hat. <clears throat> so what is x hat and what is y hat? These are special vectors. Uh, where's my thing? Here we go. So let me show you what x hat looks like. This is x hat. Ugh, that is, that looks dumb. <laughs> but that's what it is. It is. Wait, that's y hat. I fucked it up. There's x hat. Let me show you y hat. Y hat looks like this. You see? So uh, x hat and y hat are just uh, vectors pointing in the, uh, the x direction or the y direction that have a length of 1. So they're unit vectors. A, a vector with a length of 1 is a unit vector. It's special, just like the number 1 in normal math is special. Um, but these ones are even, even specialer than a normal unit vector because they point only in the direction of uh, our axes, our coordinate axes that, by which we define the world. So, let me see here. X hat points in the X direction, Y hat points, wait, X hat points in the X direction, Y hat points in the Y direction. They both have a length of 1, and they define our directions. So we call them our basis vectors. So, X hat, Y hat, Uh, ba basis vectors. I think that's what you call these things. I don't know. Anyways, that's what I'm going to call them for today. And just putting a hat over any vector means that uh, a vector in the same direction as that vector but uh, with a length of 1. So for example, u hat is the same as, it has the same direction as u but only a length of 1. So those uh, vectors, sometimes called normal normals, are very important. Length one vectors, because they they basically they're just telling their pure direction. They're they're like distilled directionality, and it's useful. Distilled directionality is very useful. I'm not gonna lie to you. So what we do is we're defining this vector as a sum of vectors purely in the x and y direction scaled by the, uh, the 
the, what do you call it, the components of our vector u. So if I have a vector u, oh fuck that. Say I got a vector u, and here's my vector u. So it has uh, components of five and or eight and five. So if I want to compose that out of my uh, what should I call it? My basis vectors. I'll take my uh, x hat right here, and I'll multiply it by eight, right? And then I'll take my y hat, and I'll multiply it by five, and then I'll add them together to get this one, which was my u. I think I called it u. That's all it is. You take your basis vectors, you scale them by your components, and you add them together, and you get your vector. It's not anything different. Fuck that. This one. It's not anything different than this representation. It's just that when, uh, when deriving things out on paper, like in uh, the form of algebra, it's sometimes uh, more convenient to write things like this as a single expression rather than as a matrix. So that's why I, I included this in my little, uh, my little explanation here. So your x hat, y hat, and I mean, <clears throat> where's my thing? Here it is. If I show my styles here, here it is as the uh, scaled basis vectors, our component vectors here in the y and x direction. And here we have them added up. And here we have uh, projections onto, this is, looks, it looks the same, I'm not going to say anything. Whatever. Uh, so yeah. So now, last thing I'm going to talk about for vectors is how we implement, how we actually calculate these different uh, uh, operations. Ugh, that was horrible. I'm getting tired of this color. I want yellow. Oh, it's so pretty. There you go. So how do we calculate these ones, you know, as number crunching exercises? I showed you them graphically on our little vector graph paper. How do we calculate them? Well, very simple. <clears throat> Let me go over it. I'm going to use uh, matrix. Uh, yeah, I'm going to use the matrix because it's easier. So k times v. How do we scale a vector? Is equal to k times uh, vx vy is equal to k vx k vy. So you just take that scalar and you multiply it by both of the uh, component scalars and you get your scaling, right? And if you know anything about triangles, that makes sense, right? Because, I mean, take this vector, 7.8, make that twice as long, so it's got 6 and a 5, and make it twice as long, it's going to be about 16. Let's see if I can do this without fucking up. Right? And that 6 and 5 became 12 and 11. Oh, let's do that, 10. There we go. Wait. Where is it? Rx12. There we go. So now the length is doubled, and by doubling the length, keeping the direction the same, we also doubled the x and the y. So when you double the length, it's the same thing as with a, a triangle. You double the length of the hypotenuse, and you double the length of both of the other sides. So that's very simple. Scaling, just multiply uh, the scale factor by each of the components. What's next? Undo like a madman, because I don't have enough space here to write all my bullshit. Okay, dividing, well, that's just the same thing. You just, you just take it inside, you divide both components by k. And negating is also the same. 
I'll write it all out for you. Whatever. I ain't got nothing better to do, right? You might have something better to do, but fuck you. I say that doesn't bother me. That doesn't concern me in the least. So it's VX, VY divided by K is equal to VX over K, VY over K, right? That's vector V divided by scalar K and negative vector V equal to negative XVY equal to negative VX, negative VY. That was a really weird Y. So yeah, <clears throat> no surprises here. Fairly straightforward. This is all pretty much straightforward. I'm saving the, the, the crazier stuff for later when we need it. That's a surprise. It'll be your birthday present. Ooh. Christmas and birthday together. All right, so what about V plus U? Well, that's just uh, Vx, Vy plus, uh, fuck that, Ux, Uy, and can you guess what it is? Vx plus Ux, Vy plus Uy. Very simple, just add the components together. And that should make perfect sense. Because, I mean, take a look at, wait, what is this? Oh, right. Not. Adding these two vectors together is the same as adding the, wait, let me see here. Let's make it, let's make it a little different here adding the x components together and then adding the y components together and you get the final result so it's just the x of the first one plus the x of the second one first one plus second one if the x goes in the opposite direction then you're gonna add them together and it's gonna go backwards and you'll end up with the result of this right so you will go from it's just adding so it's tip to tail and you'll end up with the final result of here to here I don't know if the the last one minute of my mumbling made any sense, but graphically, I think it's pretty easy to picture. And it's the same with, um, again, V minus U, vector subtraction. It's just you're subtracting the components from each other. Um, so, finding the length of a vector is a little a little more interesting but not definitely very simple so if I go like this right it's garbage this thing what does this look like looks like a triangle right and how do we do we know how to find the hypotenuse of a triangle if we know the other two sides we can and we do know the other two sides because this is just the x component and this is just the y component and we have those things. So to find the hypotenuse, we use Pythagorean theorem, which is also one of the best things. It's the, it's the good thing. I made the good theorem. That's what he said when he made it. Uh, so the absolute value of vector v is equal to the square root of vx squared plus vy squared. Bam. And that's how you find your magnitude of your vector. So there we go. We got our vector operations, we've got our vector representations, and we've got a little thing. Here's we got our uh, our notation set down for vectors and uh, unit vectors, x hat, y hat, and so forth. And I think that is where I'm going to wrap it off for today. Um, blah, I didn't want to do that. Hope nothing incriminating popped up there. Now, uh, 
if that explanation, if you're still bewildered by that, I mean, it, it, the stuff I've shown you so far, I don't think it's that difficult. But then again, I'm used to vectors. I've been working with them since, I don't know, university, which was a long time ago for me. So maybe it's hard and I just, I'm desensitized. But uh, if, if you're uh, super comfortable with what I've shown you, then you're all set for the next lesson. If you're not, you're going to have to look up this stuff on your own. You can try Khan Academy videos. Now, there was a really good video that I found, but I found it at work, and now I, I can't... I don't know where it is. Uh, let me think here. Okay, so I think I looked at vectors... Ah, I was looking up tensors. Uh, how did I do it? Tensors, vectors, maybe? Ah, here it is. So here's a video. What's a tensor? And, but, Hi. shut up. Shut up, guy. I don't want you to talk when I'm talking. This is my video. So anyways, yeah, look. Yeah, just search tensors, vectors, and go to this guy's video. <clears throat> Dan Fleisch. And he talks about vectors up until maybe here. I don't know. Where does he stop talking? Here we go. Good. So you can uh, maybe watch up until nine minutes or so. Uh, when he gets into like this crazy tensor shit. You don't have to look at that. That's just... That is not going to be applicable to what we're doing. Although it is useful. Not really what we're heading for. But if you watch up until about eight, eight and a half minutes or so, there's a lot of good stuff in here about vectors too. He's got some good explanations and demonstrations. So watch this guy's video and uh, possibly play around on this thing here if you want. Uh, there was one more thing. There's a game here you can use to uh, practice your vector skills. Oh, that's loud. So you've got to find out what uh, exp expression what of subtracting and adding vectors here will result in the vector that will get him to the next spot. So you just pick one. And you can drag these and you can uh, you can see oh, I think I got it wrong. Yeah, it, it'll give you the result so you can compare it. So you can cheat and drag vectors over and see which one it is. I think it's this one, just because I, I ruled all these ones out. Yeah, I did it. So you can play this game uh, if you want to practice vector skills. It's it's good to be able to... Uh, not just to, you know, have a basic understanding of vectors, but also to have a real visceral understanding to to get a feel for them so you know them inside your head you don't have to crunch the numbers every time when you want to figure out what will happen when you add a couple vectors or whatever so getting familiar with vectors is a good idea but I'll leave that up to you whether you want to do that or not and uh, yeah so that is oh yeah Jesus <clears throat> well I haven't even broken an hour yet so I'm good but I haven't talked about the actual vector class here, which is what I was doing before I interrupted myself. So yeah, we've got a basic class here. It lets us uh, initialize a, a blank vector with just random values or a vector with uh, the X and Y components, or you can copy a vector from another vector, a copy constructor. Here we have our um, <clears throat> uh, template for a conversion operator. It lets us convert between different vectors because this is a templated vector. So we can have vectors of floats or doubles or even ints if you wanted. Um, so yeah. This will let us convert automatically between vectors of different types. And you might find something interesting here in the syntax. I'll maybe maybe I'll go into this a little more later, but you can return a type without typing. Like I could type in here, 
uh, let me see here it would have to be underscore vec2 t2 and then I could use the constructor and that would construct a new vec2 and then return it but <clears throat> with the new C++ C++ 11 you can do this and the reason why you can do this, this is an initializer list and it can be used to initialize a, uh, a vector and the reason why it knows you're returning a vector is because the return value is a vec2 is a t2 vec2 so it already knows what kind of thing you're going to be making with this so it just uses this to make it so yeah new uh, new syntax in the new C++ it's nice it's pretty I like syntactical candy uh, here is a uh, I'm not gonna get into this but here's a function to get the length squared and here's one to get the length which is just take the square root of the length squared uh, I won't I won't bore you with the details yet we'll get into that later here is a function to normalize a vector and what that does is that uh, scales the length of the vector so that it's one it maintains its direction but it scales it down to one so it basically creates if you got a vector u it will give you u hat here rot is rotating uh, counterclockwise and clockwise by 90 degrees I won't get into that until later swap just swaps two vectors the contents of two different vectors here is our negating one and as you can see negates the x and the y like I showed you equals again assignment operator here is adding and assigning which is just add the x's and the y's like I showed you subtracting and assigning multiplying is for later adding is just uh, create a new vector from this one and then do add and assign from the, uh, the component so you can define your add your uh, your adding and your uh, subtracting based on your uh, plus equals and minus equals here that's how I do it <clears throat> I don't know if it's clear like here the plus equals operator uh, it changes the current vector so it uh, changes the values of the current vector and I return I return a uh, a reference to the vector so that I can chain multiple operations like for example I can do uh, if V is a vector I can do V plus and equals I don't know uh, R uh, plus and equals S and that works because this op this operation here returns a reference which can be used again with the, the chained operation but if I don't return uh, the reference then you can't chain your operators together and chaining operators is good so I return references wherever it's appropriate for these mutating operations now for these non mutating operations like just plus and minus these ones they return a new value so they don't change the vector itself they return a new value and how I do that is I create a new value new vector based on the current vector and then I mutate it by adding to it the uh, the right hand side of the operation and then I return that that might be confusing actually so I'm just going to explain that here quickly <clears throat> So it's like, for example, if I have a vector v plus and equals u, I'm just adding this into v. I'm changing v. Whereas if I do uh, v equals v plus u, here I add these two together, but I don't change them. I create a new temporary vector here I'll just call it P 
and then I assign that P to V. So that's the difference between the plus and equals and just the plus. This one creates a new value, which you can then you know do subsequent operations on. Whereas this one doesn't create a new value, it just it just mutates this uh, the left hand side of the operation. Okay. I just wanted to be clear on that because I don't know if I haven't actually done anything like this before. So it might be difficult for you to understand what I'm doing here. Create a new one and mutate it. Whereas here we just mutate. Alright, so that's uh, adding and subtracting. Uh, here we have multiplying by a, uh, a scalar. And as you can see there, I just multiply the, uh, the scalar by both components to scale them. And here's the same deal. We just do the times and equals on a newly created vector created from the this vector. What else do we have? We have division, which is the same thing, only dividing. Cross is not going to be a thing. Aw, oh, fuck. I don't like the name of I don't like the name cross. I'm going to I mean cross with. I'm just going to call this one cross. Uh closest point on line is something I'll talk about later is inside rectangle. Hmm. That's interesting. Here's a function that will check to see if you if a if a vector is inside a rectangle which is defined by two other vectors. So it's basically checking if a point is inside a, a rectangle defined by two other points. It's a good function. We have operator equals. It just compares two uh, vectors to see if they're the same and returns a boolean value. Not equals returns the opposite of uh, equals. And midpoint width finds the midpoint between uh, this vector and the the other vector that you passed right and you know to find the midpoint just to be thorough I'll explain this to get rid of that oh fuck I didn't want to do that that was the opposite of what I wanted to do I wanted to do this I don't want to do that oh, okay good so you got um, <clears throat> two points P1 and P2, here's our axes, to find the midpoint between the two you just find the average of their x values so the average x1 plus x2 divided by 2 is going to be right here and y1 plus y2 divided by 2 is going to be here and that will give you the midpoint so you add their components and you divide by two and that gives you your midpoint which is what I do here x plus x divided by two y plus y divided by two so yeah so it's a very um, it's a it's a lightweight class it only has two two variables <clears throat> x and y and they're public so you can like manipulate them directly but it has a lot of functions built into it so you can do a lot with this vector class and we will do a lot with it as uh, we progress in this series this is going to be the cornerstone of all of our calculations right here and there's a few operations here I haven't explained yet I will get to them and we will add new operations as we need them this thing here I edited, I will edit that in the template so you won't have to edit it. It'll be in pristine uh, condition when you get it. I kind of want to name this function just big X. But I feel like that might get mixed up with this X. So I'm going to call it cross. All right. So that is, that's it. <clears throat> that's it. I'm done. I'm out. Oh, hiccup.
So, yeah. Not much else to say. That's vectors, and that is how we the things we need. You need to download. If you haven't done it already, got to download Visual Studio 2013 for desktop, and you need to get the uh, the template, the Chili template. And that's the basics of vectors. If you don't get any stuff, you don't get stuff, then look online, look on YouTube, look on Google. Find explanations and learn, because we will need, we will be using vectors a lot. Even if the stuff that I've said uh, makes sense to you, you can still look up uh, stuff online and learn about other things, like the things I haven't introduced yet, like those vector products. You can do a little uh, studying ahead if you want. But next time when I come back, we are going to start using the vector class, and we're going to start drawing shit oh yeah one more thing that I didn't show you one more change not a biggie just a small one where is my graphics here it is <clears throat> so here I added a new function draw line and it just takes vectors instead of uh, points but all it ends up doing is draw calling the normal draw line with the uh, the components of the vectors so it's not a big deal. So, yeah. That's it. I'm out. I'm done. What am I doing? What am I looking at for time? Oh, just under an hour. Perfect. Perfect. So, next time we come back, we're going to be drawing. We're going to start drawing shit with vectors. I don't know exactly how much we're going to do. It depends on how quickly I get over the topics. But... Uh, yeah, that's it. I got nothing. I'm done. See you later. <laughs>